Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mbadi mandin kol, mbadi kamer lal, alni si soko habat sa dalibe nyo buli kafo mwami ko isaha si soko. Bi aktif tivi gibe lal be, al be dao da dunia kono, mbal be konton na sakaro mine alonko ibe France kono. Right now bi, today, mfalenti mbe pari kono. Mo jamalika na jaro lal buli kafo isaha si soko, si soko habat sa dalibe. Lafta jaro la lafta ka kendi asoto bari moja mabi je lafta kenge bu kenge no paske la siata le ntani na siata bari ni watu mbe France kono jam Paris kono jam ni mama lafta kenge telefoni ni mumo elfenti zero six cinquante un cinquante quatre trente trois quatre vingt dix huit ni mumo ni mumo ti ni mumo ni mumo kumadi dro insha Allahu Rabbi ibe sula France kono jam ye appointment ota ikafu mi rendezvous ye na inenjibe. Allah baraka baka Allah ram yamu kuni mato alin si soho habat sala benya bulu isaha si soho Paris banko kan alin bara baka ni mo mo rondi ni video ni je isaha tambi ni daka fnyola ifanya adibe insha Allah bina tourne kila Europe kono bari bibi mbe Paris kono mama lafta kenge alisi fereka alin je kata baka Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Muna nyato tati Kawili luolo Foki itaru kosa lombang Foko kole alta kilonga tambila bang Foka sube along puruka hamwalti mandi bang Imetan tol jelelo ko mwul mili along kwe manta kese bola jabato Ndu wato wati mfanansa itandila koto nyate okumoto Njube bansai Nkatile fo santo 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 Nunghanatara mwamfuta atandula afang Isa alo mbesilo leka Gambia dinkendol Gambia dinkendol Mini yalon kwe parita leka doku Oke ka falingo yake mula satar nyala Estilo mbrika maboyo Di Gambian dream Mkana dream soul pile with global property Innovative property solution Honorable speaker as the Constitution remains a top priority, my government is determined to oversee the crafting of a new Constitution for the Gambia. Hello, wonderful viewers, our wonderful subscribers. This is Active TV again for another fast and a quick update. Badi Mulu, Mbalbe Temple, Mbalbe Jaila, Mbalbe Bismillah, La Kotake. Active TV, Purkana Kibaro, Bunda, and Kotake Miyalong Kakabo, Gambia, Banco, Kang Andung Abedenik. His Excellency President Adama Barola, Gambia Banko la Alphaba Miyalonko. A nation address ke bi Gambia Banko kan. Atata dipite bunto ka nyakling Gambia no la jie Miyalonko. Walewe dipite bunto anifanan mol Miyalonko lewe jube roya taring dunia kono Gambia dingol ke address. Section 77 of the 1997 Constitution requires the President to attend a sitting of the National Assembly and address a session on the condition of the state the policies of the government and the administration of the state at least once in a year body uh, section 977 me yalon ko banko la marang kitabo kono 1997 constitution me yalon ko gambe banko be tamaka wala sign sign ten ayi tan le ko president de a purkata a député bonto a ka sije ka kacha ani banko di ngole kacha banko tamandir nyaato andum fanan ala kool be nyaamen sign sign ten banko la condition be nyaamen sign sign ten aba al hal nyaadi le to pour president ta je sans kono signa kilende a uh, constitution yo sembo di president wala le pour ayo ke ani gambe di ngole kacha ay tan di la banko be bulujumal to sign sign ten Today's event marks sixth State of Nation address by the President Adama Baro since he came to power in 2017 after defeating the then President Yahya Jame in December 1st election 2016. Mbadi Mulu, a nyina kata si nyawaron jante President Adama Baro bring anata mansela Gambia Banko kan 2017 sa okono. Bring a mobo ni sirang kaya kafo miyako Yahya Jame. President Adama Baro ataketa moti miyalong ko. Si nyawaron jante kabirin 2017. Atana sawosang si nyakiling ka nyatling gambe di ngola. Aniye kacha. Bangkobe alhal nyadi loto. Sain sain teng anumfanang atelaman sakunda. Ibu mung katakule kekang. Purka aja ko gambe di ngolbe balu kendo. Soto. President Adama Baro atela nyatling dipite bungola. Aning gambe ngol kacha da. Aitan nila gambe la kolbe bulu jumal loto. 
Sain Sain Teng. His Excellency Baro Adiamata Kuala Amiyalonko. Akumata Kendeke. Soko Ndefanye. Yimukulet Miyalonka Akumata Kendeke Kendeke Kendeke. Anungalong Akumata Gambe Dinke Mafane. Miyalonko Ikafole ko the Constitution, the new Constitution. Marang Kitab Kuto Miyalonko Gambe Nolmeta Kumbola. Ka soto Gambia Banko kan mbealone draft constitution of fintita nun a ya samba dipite bongla ya nyombu nyombu ya muta ya fai nyama fai bla. Bari His Excellency President Adam Abaro ako anala man sakunda de ibe komitri ne kendeke. Purka jako Gambia Banko e draft constitution kuto soto ka constitution kuto soto. The legal sector, honorable speaker, as the constitution remains a top priority, my government is determined to oversee the crafting of a new constitution for the Gambia. Therefore, the Ministry of Justice will resume work towards tabling a draft constitution before this August Assembly. As part of its mandate, the Ministry will continue leading the review and harmonization of existing legislation with particular focus on laws that suppress freedoms and rights. For now, bills on criminal justice reform and mutual legal assistance are before this Assembly. I hope they will be dealt with eventually. New Constitution, President Baro makes big announcement. I think Kankula bring Abala Nesson address to Gambia Bank. President Adam Abaro has said the Ministry of Justice will resume work towards tabling a new draft constitution before the National Assembly. Ako a uh, Ministry of Justice Samyalonko Ibeloring uh, uh, Luala Karola a uh, wala keta moti Miyalonko President Adama Baro a uh, nyitandide ko ibela katwa ke kan kendeke 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 purka do kuwa nyinta uh, ka tentendi hansa ende ka draft constitution o bondi ka samba dipite bungu nyate yon la. Speaking to MPs uh, today this morning uh, the President said as a, con as a constitution remain a top priority, my government is determined to oversee the drafting of a new constitution for the Gambia. President Adam Abaro, a bilen a nyatlin dipite la anifanang a diamuta gambe dingole a kabo dipite bungro. A itandiko a constitution ode kom kula miyalong ka kumata kendeke kendeke kendeke. Anifanang top priority lom a kula miyalong ko. Nyantaba lom miyalong ka ba nyantol be sando. Ko anala man sakunda de ibe parere nde kendeke kendeke kendeke. Purka joko ka constitution kuto ta ka bondi nang gambe dingole at the president Adam Abaro ala nyaton kaya koto abo katakan kendeke 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 ala foro. Therefore, the Ministry of Justice will resume work towards tabling a draft constitution before this August Assembly. Ako a woto de it will be cut off woman kekande purka joko gambe dingole constitution kuto soto de at the president Adam Abaro ala Ministry of Justice de ibera cut off kekan kendeke purka joko ka draft constitution bondi nang ka samba nying August Assembly nyatli ona. Towards tabling a draft constitution before this August Assembly. As part of its mandate, the Ministry will continue leading the review and harmonization of existing legislation with particular focus on laws that suppress freedoms and rights. For now, bills on criminal justice reform and mutual legal assistance are before this Assembly. I hope they will be dealt with eventually. Among other bills tabled before the National Assembly is the Anti-Corruption Bill 2020, which seeks to establish an anti-corruption commission after enactment to uproot corruption. As part of its mandate, the Ministry will continue leading the review and harmonization of existing legislation with particular focus on law that suppress freedom and rights. Badi ngulu a ministry de a nying a draft constitution kuto miyalonko. Iba bondla nande, iba kool jubele je miyalonko, iba kumara kendeke kendeke kendeke. Soko a luwal miyalonko wali luota kendeke 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 kendeke. Hana badi ngulu la freedom o na fansoto Kenya animfanang na 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 freedom freedom o soto kuru inyanta kool, inyanta inyanto detail, inyanta kool mulke la hana badi ya inyanto ol puru isol keno nyameng. Among other bills tabled before the National Assembly is the Anti-Corruption Bill 2020, which seeks to establish an anti-corruption commission after enactment to approve corruption. Eko bilo lefnal de miyalonko. Ina inya itata nying a National Assembly de adabe kono fanande anti-corruption bilo miyalonko ya fanang bwandi purga joko ka corruption o kele miyalonko lom bede bede ti sunyaro yefenta miyalonka manketa ti. 
Uh, iko ofana mbe ko nyil kono mi yalon ko bilo nying aba kono anti corruption bill madin lu his excellency president adama baro coming off ala nyameng atale di amata ko ke gambia di ngole si nya woro nyama biring anata man sa ala kabo 2017 sans kono kana futa bila mbedi wala ala mari alma ale kairo sabatin di gambia banko ka watol bela gambia di ngobe dawda ne alma ale kairo di bela ngani ne sotali bi this is active TV update. The legal sector, Honorable Speaker, as the Constitution remains a top priority, my government is determined to oversee the crafting of a new Constitution for the Gambia. Therefore, the Ministry of Justice will resume work towards tabling a draft Constitution before this August Assembly. As part of its mandate, the Ministry will continue leading the review and harmonization of existing legislation with particular focus on laws that suppress freedoms and rights. For now, bills on criminal justice reform and mutual legal assistance are before this assembly. I hope they will be dealt with eventually. Among other bills tabled before the National Assembly is the Anti-Corruption Bill 2020, which seeks to establish an anti-corruption commission after enactment to uproot corruption. Cabinet recently approved the Intellectual Property Bill 2021 to streamline the administration of intellectual property rights in the Gambia and have a centralized intellectual system. Following the submission of the TRRC report last year, Cabinet approved the relevant government white paper in May 2022 for implementation. Mr. Speaker, with three years of existence, the NHRC proved to be fully compliant with the Paris principles. As a result, the Global Alliance of National Human Rights Institutions granted it a status. To the credit of government and the Commission, the African Commission on Human and People's Rights also granted it affiliated status. Thus, it can share submission with them on human rights issues within the country. We will support its attainment of first class accreditation status. The Ministry is committed to the construction of the African Commission on Human and People's Rights Headquarters as part of government's contribution towards hosting the Secretariat. It propose, it, it purpose is to transform the Gambia into the capital of human rights promotion. On the international front, the Gambia will pursue, the, Gambia will pursue to the end the case of justice for the Rohingya before the International Court of Justice. It is encouraging that the Netherlands and Canada have joined us to end the genocide of the Rohingya. Mr. Speaker. The role of the courts in providing access to, qua to quality justice delivery constitutes the pillars of a stable democracy, peace and development. As a result, my administration is committed to supporting the judiciary's growth and development, recruitment of judicial experts, particularly qualified Gambians, and maintenance of its independence and impartiality. To achieve this noble goal, the executive will collaborate with the Chief Justice and the Judicial Commission. We honor them and celebrate their achievements with it. We honor them and celebrate their achievements with them. The subsector is aware of the need to expand the implementation of post-transitional justice mechanism, redress victims of rights violations and scale of advocacy on healing and reconciliation. We will remain supportive of the judiciary as it addresses these issues and evolves to maintain public trust and respect. Fisheries, water resources, and national assembly matters. Honorable Speaker, the fisheries sector contributes about 12% to GDP and provides direct employment to over 30,000 people. It has an enormous potential to contribute to diversifying the economy and reducing the unemployment rates. The new policy, medium-term strategic document and plan, for, plan of action for the sector are ready for validation. Once finalized, the Ministry of Fisheries will work towards amending the Fisheries Act and regulations. With partner support, the sector is expanding use of fish processing and preservation technologies to contribute to the economic viability of small-scale fishing, fish smoking enterprises of women. They constitute up to 80% of post-harvest fisheries operators 
in the sector. In the major operations to combat illegal, unregulated, and unreported fishing, the Gambia Navy, police force, and volunteer fishermen recently seized and destroyed over 500 illegal fishing traps and tried five culprits before competent district tribunals. It flags the need for sustained vigilance. Mr. Speaker, my government will table two agreements before this Honorable Assembly for ratification. They are agreements between the, the, between the government of the Gambia and the government of Senegal on fisheries and aquaculture, and the government of Ghana on fisheries. The sector will also introduce to this Honorable Body a bill to provide an up-to-date comprehensive water act for the Gambia and a bill to establish a new National Water Resources Management Authority. Correspondingly, the National Meteorological and Hydrological Services provider and partners are collaborating with the World Meteorological Organization to implement the national framework for climate services and intensify action to address climate risks and related issues. I encourage the private sector and other actors to team up with the government to fully harness the opportunities created and reduce the hazards associated with the climate system. Lands, local government, and religious affairs, Honorable Speaker. As population growth poses challenges to land usage, land resources are under tremendous strain globally. Accordingly, my administration recognizes that prudent management of these precious resources is essential for poverty reduction and national food security. The Ministry of Lands, Regional Government and Religious Affairs must execute this function effectively and impartially. On programs and projects, the sector is currently implementing 20 workshop projects with a total fund disbursement capacity of $21,231,460. The sub projects take the form of water supply systems, grading and culvert construction. The second phase accommodates 12 additional wood in URR North and South. Moving on, the Directorate of Governance and Decentralization is set to roll out the integrated financial management information system, IFMIS, to all the local government councils to improve sound fiscal management. The COVID outbreak delayed the process initially. The project cost estimates is $7,810,200, which the government and UNDP will provide. Honorable members, the sector is reviewing the Local Government Act 2002, the Finance and Audit Act 2004, and the Local Government Service Scheme. The objective is to make them responsive to governments evolving local govern governance and decentralization policy. In recognition of the role of the village heads, Alcalo, in their communities, my administration now pays every Alcalo a monthly responsibility allowance of $3,000 with effect from January 2022. <laughs> Finally, the NGO bill is ready for enactment as the NGO Act 2021. Interior, Honorable Speaker, the Gambia Police Force continues to protect life and property and preserve law and order for peace and stability. To this end, the Gambia Police Force, with the support of local and international partners, has refocused its strategic plan and core values to align them with the national security policy, national security strategy, and the national security sector reform strategy. Related to this, the Gambia Police Force has developed 14 operational instruments, standard operating procedures and guidelines, and a national community policing strategy. To briefly comment on its operations, the Gambia Police Force currently has 25 community policing programs and 175 active community policing structures, supported by community policing volunteers. Together, 
with other security services. I commend them for their effective participation in the last two national elections. They promoted impartiality and democratic policing values. To avoid attrition and enhance adequate security for the upcoming OIC summit from 2021 to date, the Gambia Police Force recruited 1,200 personnel and conducted 63 training programs for 1,812 police officers in critical areas of policing. On the other hand, the Gambia Immigration Department collaborated with the Geneva Center for Security Sector Governance to amend the current 1965 Immigration Act and align it with international standards. As referenced in their strategic plan 2019-2024, these amendments will lead to the enhancement of the Immigration Service Act 2023. The Gambia Immigration Department contributes to the national revenue in several ways. In this respect, the department collected $91,980,370 in 2020, which increased by about 12% in 2021 to $103,362,940. Revenue collection for 2022 is likely to be higher. We commend them for this achievement. The Gambia Fire and Rescue Service works to safeguard life and property. In this light, the Gambia Fire Service received and responded to 1,128 emergency calls in 2021. Of these, 823 were related to fire incidents and 305 were rescue calls. They rescued 228 persons alive, but there were 29 fatalities. This highlights the need for vigilance in our homes and at sea. The Gambia Prison Act of 1953 Amendment Bill 2022 at cabinet approval prior to its submission to the National Assembly. The enactment of the bill is meant to repeal key colonial legal provisions on prison officers and inmates and institute international standards and best practices. The review of the Drug Control Act 2003 for amendment is at an advanced stage. The new bill incorporates international protocols and treaties and the ministry will table it here for consideration. In the interim, it is necessary to impress upon the anti-drug agency the need for vigilance to free the nation from drug abuse and trafficking. Department for Strategy, Policy and Delivery, Honorable Speaker. The Department for Strategy, Policy and Delivery, DSPD, under the Office of the President, provide policy support to the sectors and convenes National Economic Council meetings and organizes retreats for permanent secretaries. It also supports the Cabinet Office. The Department coordinates the Program for Accelerated Community Development Pack, which is a special initiative of the Office of the President. Through this project, government facilitated access to proper infrastructure, safe drinking water, roads, energy, and labor-saving equipment in rural communities. Also, the DSPD collaborates with UNDP, the MDAs, and the regional offices away from Banjun and KMC to implement the project. So far, it has provided water system for 31 communities in the five regions. On electricity supply, 10 communities are now connected to the main grid, with an additional seven communities targeted on the North Bank. More than 10,000 households in the area will benefit from this intervention. The project will gradually spread to other parts of the country. I am pleased to observe that the food security component of the project provided 19 tractors with accessories and 9 post harvest processing equipment to 38 communities in the country. To 38 communities in the country. This is to support rural farmers, especially women. <coughs> to ensure sustainability of the project assets and boost revenue generation, this initiative will include capacity building on asset management and revenue generation. Private sector participation is being mobilized to stimulate private sector investment in rural infrastructure, particularly renewable energy assets. My administration, through the Department of Strategy, Policy and Delivery, continue to coordinate the United Nations Peace Building Fund activities in the Gambia to boost peace building efforts in the country. We acknowledge with gratitude the UNPBFC, PBFs, 
contributes to the implementation of the National Development Plan. Closely related to this, the Ministry of Interior and the DSPD, working with civil society organizations, continue to play a key role in developing the first ever infrastructure for peace, 14P, the centerpiece of which will be a National Council for Peace and Social Cohesion. Still on coordination, the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs and the DSPD currently coordinate the development of the UN Cooperation Framework under the guidance of the UN country team. A joint government UN program coordination group is working to ensure that all assistance for the country occurs with our national priorities. The DSPD is now relocated to the Ministry of Public Service, Administrative Reform, Policy Coordination and Delivery for better results. <coughs> Concluding remarks, Honorable Speaker. <clears throat> Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members of the National Assembly, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as my address shows, ours is a story of success. Despite the major hurdles that slowed down my administration's performance and the country's development over the past five years. With resounding success, we have reclaimed our rights and freedoms, restored democracy in the country, and rescued our dignity and honor as a nation. <clears throat> we have gone through the transition phase in peace, registering phenomenal successes in various aspects of development, embracing infrastructure development energy, education, health, agriculture, and transitional justice amid other achievements. On the world stage, we have imposed our country's visibility and our partnerships and relations with the world are growing fruitfully. The commissions and other structures we initiated were relevant, necessary, and functionally useful. Looking ahead, Following the remarkable 2021 and 2022 elections, we now have a new cabinet of national character, a new legislature of diverse composition, and a revitalized, strengthened, and respectable Gambian judiciary. Our reform institutions and evolving civil service provide sufficient grounds for optimism as we begin the march to 2026. Today, the government respects and listens to the voice of the people. Hence, the multiple energized political parties that continue to make their presence felt. We must note, however, that the Gambia has a hopeful, inspired, but needy population. Therefore, the responsibility lies on all of us to fulfill their aspirations. The first cabinet retreat held in June of this year, confirms my government resolve to do this and deliver on our promises because it was not all rosy during the last five years. We know that there are loose ends to tie, gaps to fill, and missing links to fix. The retreat focused on selected teams to address the long-standing challenges facing the country as well as emerging ones. I must observe, however, that we will tackle the thematic areas within the administration's broader and holistic approach to national development. Thus, infrastructure, health, agriculture, digital technology, the economy, and other areas of development will continue to receive due attention. The minority group women, the youth, and people with disability will attract special focus in the process. Mr. Speaker, honorable members of the National Assembly, my government offers the nation a new socio-political order, not tied to social preferences, partisan politics, or any form of extremism. This is a national order purely for patriotic service and development. I plead that we embrace it as a construct that calls for uprightness, sincerity, and diligence. The notion is that 
the honorable members of this assembly have three functions to perform. That is representation, legislation, and oversight. Your responsibilities certainly go beyond these three. The mantle of leadership cast upon you by virtue of your membership of the national legislature, by membership of the legislature, and the fortune of being a family head or belonging to a family and community. To social functions and responsibilities upon you to foster peace and cohesion in your, in your communities, consequences, and the nation at large. You have the responsibility to educate your consequences, the opportunity to initiate development projects and programs, and the option to engage government. We are open to dialogue, and I ask that we work together. Aside from being legislators, you have the ambassadorial role of representing the nation at international forums and holding meetings with foreign dignitaries and philanthropists. This creates an opportunities for you to promote national policies and plans and raise funds for national development. The diverse composition of this assembly spells a new era in Gambian politics and a new outlook for the legislature. The people's expectations are high, so you must not allow any party interest to overshadow your tenure and performance. In whatever you do, let the interests of the nation come first. To deliver, it is impressive that you walk along bipartisan lines to fulfill the people's aspirations and safeguard the honor of those who choose you to represent them. As I always emphasize, the opportunities are much greater today. And there is no justification for any citizen to anticipate gloom for the country. May Allah grant us a successful legislature session, legislative session, full of grace, development, and a lot of opportunities and advancement for the citizens and residents of the Gambia within an environment of sustained peace, stability, and security. I thank everyone, especially our development partners, for their support, and I wish this August Assembly fruitful deliberations. I thank you.